Hi, I'm Grant Bova. I'm Neil Bova. Hi, I'm Merle Hamill. Welcome to the Log Cabin Hunt Club. Okay, it's a rainy uh, Wednesday or Thursday on the second week. Uh, we typically hunt the first week. Uh, last week we got two does, or a doe and a buck fawn, and uh, a young lad that hunts with us had got an eight point buck. So we're going to take a stroll out the back here and uh, see what we can find today. Eric, you're coming with me. Let's go. I'll be taking my two house dogs, Jack and Dakota, through and see if we can run you something out. Yeah, same idea. Probably approximately over there, just around the corner, and then Neil will be beyond him. And I've opened up a shooting lane right through here, and there's another shooting lane directly behind you there. I said I brought my uncle out here two years ago, the second week of hunting season. And uh, he didn't get here till about 3.30, and uh, so I got him on packed at the camp. And then we walked, uh, walked back to the fire dam with him, just to show him the lay of the property, because he hadn't been here before. And then I told him, it was about 4.30 or so, I said, I told him to come back. I said, just sit in this tree stand, and I said, I'd take a walk up around the fire pond and just come out here, and, you know, chance something might come, you never know. And uh, he got back here in the tree stand, and I wasn't even to the fire into the pond yet. And I heard him shooting, and there was a nine-point buck come up from behind here, and, and uh, he got shooting out right in the in the hollow there. And we ended up getting it. I got it after we went and tracked it and found it and got it. If what you're working ain't, or what you're doing ain't working, you better change what you're doing. No more hunting in the rain. Well, it looks like that's it for the hunt. It's getting pretty dark and hasn't looked good, hasn't sounded very good. Here comes the dogger. Did you see anything? Well, the dogs did. She took two chases. Well, I heard I heard her down here, yeah. yeah. And then just pond. now when I was coming out, she uh, put one out probably across where the tower stand is. Oh, okay. It's been a good long chase, too long than she usually takes. Well, there was uh, nothing in between. He held the safety off the gun back there. He said he was... That's what was coming. It was right, you know, right in the vicinity, but it turned and went. Well, they might have, might have pushed it in when they walked in, too. Could have, yeah. Might have known where they were. It goes like this, so it's, it's pretty well locked in there. You unsnap that, you can walk through the bush with it like that. But when you want to shoot, you just bring it up. It just slides up like that. We put in a barn door track on the uh, bottom of the big pipe, and then we have uh, barn door pulleys to uh, some hooks on chains, and, uh, and we can actually slide the deer. We can just keep sliding, add more gear to the uh, back and forth on the chain on the track. You want to take them down just for the fun of it? Sure. We bought one of these from uh, an outfitter, Gam Hooks. And then one of the guys used to hunt with us made up a bunch of them, and there because we used to use a chunk of. Whatever you found. Ironwood. Around, eh? So this is great. Once they're made, they last forever. Boat winch. Just a $19 boat winch from Princess Auto. Bolted it onto the piece of angle iron on the tree. Pulley up top there. So now one guy can come back with the deer in the back of the truck. He just hooks the gam stick in through the the deer's legs. There we go. Just starts cranking. So if it's laying in the back of the truck, all you got to do is hook the hook on. Clear. And you scoot that over to the other side. Ready for the next one. It is marginal land. Yeah. He says these are out of the bush, the ones he's talking about. And 
I guess it wasn't a bad size deer, 160 pounds or something, but it had a rack on it that you would expect to see off of a, you know, a hundred pound buck yeah. or something. And, and just no shape to it at all. And he said, we've even got six and eight pointers, but the same thing, just little tiny racks on them and they're misshapen and ugly looking. So I was just wondering if there's many guys at camps have big plans that they've never got around to because we got a truckload of them. <laughs> we got things we want to do to the camp. We want to put up more tree stands. We want to get some feed plots going and we just, time just seems to drift away every year and we just never get around to the stuff. And, we more or less got the camp good enough to move into, and we, and we kept it like that for what six or eight years. Well, I think it's fifteen. <laughs> well, then we finished up the cathedral ceiling, and we paneled upstairs and everything, and got that going. But uh, all the things we would like to do, cleaning out shooting lanes is a good one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do that every year. The same just, thing. Yeah, if we had a shooting lane here, we'd be came. all set. <laughs> You can see the deer coming, but you can't shoot them, which is entertaining, but not very productive, so. Well, boys, I think you got the main thing in here, and that's the Pepsi machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have our priorities right, anyway, yeah. no question. Hunt camp wouldn't be the same without it. Okay, this uh, Pepsi cooler used to be in the hydro shop in Perth, and uh, they had it up for the United Way silent auction in there, and I ended up with it. And it's worked out pretty good for the hunt camp here, we all drink canned beer, so the only we could only get the price down to a nickel, but so far we haven't had too many complaints. And everybody loves to hear that sound. <laughs> all our beer comes courtesy of Jeremy Steves at the Perth Brewing Company. Well, that should be worth this. This Free announcement hat, paid for by <laughs> Jeremy Steves. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. That's Dawkin Road, and that comes into our camp here. This is the pond that we're on. And then this, what we call the second pond, and the second dam here. Yeah. So our camp property runs right up here to the tenth line, and across and down the, down the side line. And then I, I own uh, this property here. I've got I've got half of a lot, the front half of the of the lot. So we've got 120 here in the hunt camp, another 60 here next door that we hunt, and we hunt the 60 behind me. So we've got 240 acres here in a in a block that we hunt, and then Merle has what do you got? 100 and 184 184 <laughs> acres out here, yeah. and Gene would have Gene's got another 100 and 100 plus anyway. Probably the same as Randy's, yeah. Yeah. And the beaches across runs, the road, we have beaches across here. Too. Yeah. And then we've got another 100, 100 acres across there across that we there, hunt. Sorry. Plus the 200 acres beside it. And yeah, the 200 here beside it, right, right through, I guess. Right? Yeah, right through. Yeah. So all together, we're hunting two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 900 to a thousand acres I would say we we, uh -huh. we can get on to yeah. uh, most of it we don't hunt well, not ever do we hunt heavily but uh, most of it <laughs> most of it we're on to once or twice through the week and, and uh, just when the moon strikes us but typically we hunt back here and we hunt out every day pretty well at, at Merle's and Randy's and, and uh, give it a go so. my gun of choice is a Remington 30-06 the automatic oh. uh, I got it uh, brand new, about 1981. What ended up happening was our house was broken into and my original gun was stolen. And the insurance bought me a brand new one with a scope and I've been hunting with it ever since. It's never jammed on me, it's a good gun. My gun that I use, I don't know if it's a choice or not, but I have it, uh, is a uh, Savage 99E with the rotary magazine in it. And I bought it back in about 1980, and I bought it used actually from a gentleman in Ottawa who used to use it for moose hunting, and decided to get a moose hunting, so I picked it up, and uh, it's been an excellent gun that never jammed and dropped a lot of deer in front of it. Get, get he neglected to mention he's missed a couple of deer in front of it too, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that out. Uh, I have a 30 out six Remington pump. Um, bought it at Lurinch and Trading Post, probably. 1985 or something and uh, I was actually going for the carbine 
and they didn't have one, so I ended up with the long one, but I'm pretty happy with it. I've got lots of deer with it, and it's a comfortable gun, and, and uh, never had a problem with it. Venison, venison wrapped in bacon, and uh, about two-thirds to three-quarters of a cup of Worcestershire sauce, and uh, covered with water. It takes about another cup, cup of water or so to cover it. Shake a little pepper on salt on top, and then just boil her down. And then you finish it, just make sure you, when it's, once the water's boiled off, that you stir it quite a bit to get the sauce on it. So that's it. So there's some deer that we shot. Here. That's Randy and his girlfriend, Dirty Dolly. Everything came off the property, the poplar beams. was to get away from it but no um, camp life you know the camaraderie the uh, we can sit here for hours and shoot the shit and talk and visit and and you just there's no better way to relax if it wasn't for the guys that we that I hunt with uh, they won't say the same um, there's no better reason to hunt like it, it's great to get out and and enjoy it that's all obviously part of it but you know if if you're going somewhere else and you didn't have your own place or you didn't have people you know and you get along with, it wouldn't be the same. It's always, to me, it's the people. A way of life, something different. Just uh, get away from the same old bull and the same old routine and back to the way it used to be or should be or, I don't know, it's just a different way of life. Just a comfort zone. Enjoy it. Just... I love getting out in the bush. I love, uh... I guess the excitement, uh, hunting with dogs, there's nothing like it. Sitting on a watch and seeing the wildlife and the deer and the squirrels playing, that's that's good, but once you hear that chase coming with the dogs, that's kind of what makes the hunt. Uh, for most of us back here, if we get a deer, it's just a bonus, but it's a week away, it's a vacation, it's a quiet time, you get away from all the worries of everyday life, and you're out in the bush enjoying it, and probably there's no better place to enjoy it. Thanks for coming to the Log Cabin Hunt Club. Cheers. Great time.